The Westford Town Common is located in the center of Westford and was bought in 1744 as a training field. One of the unique features of the Town Common is a military cannon at the tip of the triangular green. Well, my name is Ellen Hardy and I moved to Westford with my husband in 1967, so this is our 46th spring here. And uh, I think I got interested in Westford history, I've always loved history, but Westford history specifically. In the late 1970s, I was and am a member of the Westford League of Women Voters. And we decided to do a history of the town of Westford as a slide tape show. And uh, sort of by default, I, had, I ended up writing the script for that. And in the process of doing that and getting in touch with Westford residents to find old photographs of Westford, I got very quickly smitten with the history of this town. So that's what brought me to Westford history. Well, there's a wonderful story about the canon. Um, in, in 1898, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, whose name was Sherman D. Fletcher, a good old Westford name, uh, got in touch with the man who was the Secretary of the Navy. And he was a gentleman by the name of John D. Long, who had been the preceptor or principal at Westford Academy. And uh, Sherman Fletcher said, are there any leftovers from the Spanish-American War that the town of Westford perhaps could have? And they found that cannon in storage somewhere in Washington, D.C., which had been in uh, uh, Santiago, Cuba. Uh, so it was one of the ports that the United States um, was fighting in during the Spanish-American War. And it was loaned to the people of Westford um, as an example, uh, so that it would be the, the, an example of why there should be no more wars. It didn't quite work, but anyway, there it sits. Uh, the cannonballs also came at the same time, and if you are perceptive, you will notice that the cannonballs do not go with the cannon. Uh, that was so that there would be no one who would try to fire the cannon, and the letter from Washington said specifically that if it was ever fired, the U.S. government was not in any way responsible for any damage that was done. So it was placed there, it came by train from Washington, D.C., and was put right on that, uh, that point of the Westford Common. And uh, one of the things that they would do on Halloween night, I shan't tell you the others because I don't want to give you any good ideas, um, is that they would take all the cannonballs and they would roll them down Main Street and someone would have to find them in the morning. So uh, that was ended when the uh, street highway department decided that they would weld them together. So that tradition came to an end. The last person that I knew of who admitted to doing that uh, was Gordon Seavey. And Gordon was born in Westford in the first decade of the 1900s. There were a hundred, and we're not sure where they all went. Um, the Rodenbush Community Center was built at about the same time. It was the second Westford Academy. It was built as Westford Academy, and that was in 1897. And if you look at old photographs of the Rodenbush built when it was brand spanky new, there are little triangles of uh, cannonballs all the way around the circular driveway. So there are probably about seven in a pile. So that seemed to consume some of them. Um, when I was involved with the Rodenbush, we uh, took a metal detector and we dug around a lot to see if perhaps they had simply been buried under the lawn, but we have never unearthed the others. So the only ones that still remain are the piles that are, uh, are on the common.